think most folks would be surprised to learn that the one spot on Earth you can see the most snakes is not in some tropical or desert region, but instead is at a northerly latitude in the high plains and aspen forests of Manitoba, Canada. Now granted, it is just one species of snake we are talking about, but its numbers are truly astronomical. The species is the red-sided garter snake, a reptile that can overwinter in communal dens that can total tens of thousands of snakes. These garter snake dens are located in an area that is referred to as the interlake region of Manitoba, which simply means the land between several large lakes, including Lake Manitoba and Lake Winnipeg. And the largest dens of the interlake region which we were fortunate to visit in May of 2018 reside in Narciss. This tiny town is located 110 kilometers north of Manitoba's largest city, Winnipeg. And here in south central Manitoba, also referred to as the interlake region, is perhaps one of the most incredible natural wonders of the world. It is the largest gathering of reptiles at certain times of the year than at anywhere on the planet and in probably within Earth's history itself. The Narsa snake dens have become a tourist destination, attracting thousands upon thousands of people from all over the world. And one of the first group of folks we struck up a conversation with were from England. The Narsa snake dens are made up of four distinct snake dens, which are interconnected by a three kilometer trail loop. The Narsa snake dens are limestone sinkholes. How are these sinkhole dens formed? Well, according to the helpful kiosk at Narsis, over thousands of years, water seeps through the very thin layer of topsoil, absorbing carbon dioxide along the way. The water and carbon dioxide mix to form a weak acid that slowly dissolves the limestone. A series of caves and underground watercourses are eaten into the limestone by the acids. The roof of the cavern often collapses, leaving a depression at the surface, called a sinkhole. Each of these den sites is one of these depressions under which was a cavern. How many more caverns are below Narciss and how they are connected, we do not know. The purpose of the dens is to allow garter snakes access below the freeze line during Manitoba's long frigid winter. In April and May, the spectacle begins as the red-sided garter snakes emerge in mass. Males generally emerge first, eagerly awaiting the females which they will attempt to breed with the moment they are on the surface. This is a bunch of males struggling to mate with a lone female. Notice how much larger the female is. Here is a better look at the size difference between the genders. The red-sided garter snake mating frenzy usually forms these mating balls, consisting of many males and often just one female. And they usually occur at or near hibernacula. All species of garter snakes give live birth. Red-sided garter litters range on average from 13 to 26. Babies or neonates are born in late summer and there is no maternal care so the young are meant to fend for themselves the moment they enter the world. The babies are born in the summer range where they will spend their first winter, assuming they can find a suitable spot below the freeze line. The adults and young feed on invertebrates and amphibians. Some of these mating balls can get quite big, seemingly taking on a life of its own. Notice here there are two mating balls occurring at the same time. This disorganized mating ball is actually up in a snag. Spring emergence for some red-sided garter snakes has fatal consequences. These snakes, preoccupied with mating and basking, become easy prey for several species of birds, such as crows, ravens, and magpies, which often just target the snake's protein-rich liver. Most of the snakes that escape predation have another lethal threat to contend with as they migrate towards their summer ranges, 
and that is road mortality. And one glaring statistic estimated that 10,000 snakes were killed by vehicles annually through the 1990s as the snakes attempted to cross Highway 17, which cuts through Narciss. So the millennium began with Manitoba Hydro and volunteers putting up drift fences to redirect the majority of migrating snakes to tunnels that go underneath Highway 17. This measure has reduced road mortality significantly and the population has possibly rebounded to its historic high of 70,000. Unfortunately, severe flooding in the dens during the spring of 2022 may have caused a temporary die-off. So as world famous as the Narciss snake dens are, there are in fact red-sided garter snake dens throughout a good portion of Manitoba, many large ones near the Narciss snake dens. Where we are now is about 20 kilometers south of Narciss, Manitoba. Actually in Inwood, Manitoba, where the town erected this statue in honor of the red-sided garter snake. So unlike the Narciss snake dens, which have that sinkhole, this is just more of a slope of broken limestone. And what you have is, or what we're observing are several small holes broken through the limestone if you will, snake holes, even though the snakes themselves don't burrow the holes, but they do probably open them up a little bit. And right in front of me here, there are several individuals, actually about six or seven right now, oops, I'm about to step on one, coming in and out of, the, out of, out of these holes. Since not all the film crew can be working at the same time, we have half the film crew right now taking a break. Can, all, can you guys all say hi at the same time? Here was the jackpot along this rocky hillside bluff. And nearby, heard before actually seen, was a squirming mating ball. So while we were on the ground here getting footage for the last half an hour or so, snakes have been uh, attracted to Sarah, or more specifically the shade that she's creating. It's a very, it's a hot afternoon, almost 30 degrees Celsius. So she claims that there's a bunch underneath her and she's gonna very carefully try to get herself up slowly off the ground without crushing any. So let's see how it goes. More interesting than that little episode was how the snakes behaved when we began to offer them water. Now the snakes are already thirsty coming out of brumation and Manitoba was experiencing a drought during our visit, so the reptiles were especially eager to take advantage of our ample water supply. Soon we decided it would just be easier to fill caps of water. And it wasn't long before a few dozen snakes arrived at our makeshift watering hole. This really was such an incredible sight. A handful were even bold enough to drink directly out of our water bottles. Before the trip was through, we had another pleasant surprise. The red-sided garter snakes were actually using the nearby snake sculpture as a den site.
I highly recommend a visit to the Narciss snake dens. It is truly one of the natural wonders of the world. The park is family oriented, wheelchair accessible, and has even become a field trip destination for Winnipeg school kids. And not to mention, the park has no entrance fee. Handling the snakes is allowed. It is a great opportunity for kids and adults alike to get close up and personal with an interesting animal often misunderstood. Please keep handling any of the snakes brief and be as gentle as possible. We unfortunately did observe a few snakes that literally had the life squeezed out of them. Also, do not disturb any of the mating balls. Despite its fairly remote location, visiting Narsa snake dens is relatively easy. Winnipeg, which is a large modern city with an international airport, is only a 90-minute drive from Narciss. We flew to Winnipeg from Connecticut with a layover in Toronto. A closer option to Narciss is Gimli, Manitoba. Gimli, 43 kilometers east of Narciss, is a small quaint town on the western shore of Lake Winnipeg. You will want to plan your visit during spring emergence, which tends to peak around Mother's Day weekend or fall ingress in late September. If you have a flexible schedule, check out the Narciss Den update page, which not only offers updates on den activity, but gives projections on the level of activity for the near future. I have a link below to their webpage. We visited the Narciss Dens between May 8 and 12, and again on the 20th and 21st. If you are in the area and are looking for other things to do, or like during our visit it was too cold one day for snake activity, I highly recommend that you check out the Assiniboine Park Zoo in Winnipeg, one of Manitoba's premier tourist attractions, which has one of the best arctic species exhibits in the world. Okay folks, that is a wrap. Thanks for tagging along, and if you like this production, please consider subscribing. But definitely the most, the largest concentration of snakes anywhere on the planet, and probably at any other time in Earth's history, and of course not just snakes, that would include reptiles. And a dog with sunglasses.